after a 75% sell off. Is UiPath stock a buy? In this video, we'll do a deep dive on UiPath and if you stay till the end, you'll find out what I'll be doing with the stock. What is going on YouTube? My name is Riado and I tell stories about the most innovative companies in the world in a simple and easy to understand format. If that is something that you like to hear, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss future videos. With that said, let's get started. So let's talk about what UiPath does as a business. UiPath is the leading RPA software provider. RPA stands for Robotics Process Automation and it basically enables a business to build and deploy software robots to automate business processes and tasks. If I have to sum up UiPath's value proposition into one sentence, it'll be this. Provide a low-code end-to-end automation platform that utilizes user interface automation, API management, and artificial intelligence computer vision technology to emulate human actions within digital systems and subsequently free workers of manual, time-consuming, and repetitive tasks. I know it's a mouthful, but basically what UiPath does is they help businesses automate some of the most repetitive, boring, and manual tasks in the business. So here you can see seven modules that um, UiPath has, which creates the full suite of automation products to help businesses automate repetitive tasks. The goal here is to deliver the fully automated enterprise as they like to call it. So here's an example of how UiPath can help customers. Let's say you're a doctor and basically doctors like to do very manual tasks and that includes receiving lab reports, entering data, writing letters, emails, and verifications and all that stuff. And that could take really five minutes of unmeaningful work. But with UiPath, you can automate some of the most repetitive tasks, including um, pulling reports, presenting forms, creating, sending, and confirming letter, and that could really um, speed up the process. And you can focus on doing some of the more meaningful tasks, like serving patients. So this is just a simple use case. You know, some of the benefits include uh, major cost savings, higher accuracy by minimizing human error, fraud detection, higher productivity, happier employees because they get to do more meaningful stuff, and better and faster customer experience through automation. So the RPA market is still in its early stages. It was valued at $17 billion in 2020. It's expected to grow to 30 billion by 2024, and UiPath estimated that it's going to be a $60 billion opportunity for the company. I think the opportunity is going to be much bigger than $60 billion, but who knows, right? I mean, market adoption for RPA solution is still very, very low. According to a Bain survey, companies plan to adopt a broader range of technologies, and that includes robotic process automation, where less than 20% use it today, but more than 40% of those plan to use it within two years. And also the annual world population growth rate is expected to slow down significantly. And I think this is a very good opportunity for UiPath because a lot of companies need to stay competitive in a fast changing technological world. And having robots, software robots can be very useful, especially when there's a tight labor market because of the slowing world population growth. So now let's take a look at how UiPath makes money. They have three major revenue segments, which is licenses, subscription revenue, and professional services. UiPath earns licenses revenue when a customer signs an agreement to use UiPath's software. Subscription services revenue is pretty much the same as licenses revenue. It's just that they're using UiPath software as a subscription service instead. And then we have professional services, which is pretty much like uh, consulting, training, education to help the business or the customer to deploy the software robots on their own. 
So these two segments are recurring in nature while this one is not recurring. Um, however, it's important to note that the revenue from these two segments are recognized very differently. So for the licenses revenue, revenue is recognized upfront, while subscription service revenue is recognized rateably over the contractual period of the arrangement. Let's take a look at an example here. Let's say a customer signs for a one-year contract worth $1,000. UIPF will then have to recognize revenue by splitting them into two segments, subscription and licenses, equally. But let's say UIPF signs for a multi-year contract instead, and let's say it's a $6,000 investment by the customer. As you can see here, licenses revenue will be recognized upfront, while subscription services revenue will be recognized over the contractual period of the agreement. So this is the reason why it is better to look at ARR, which is annual renewal run rate. As you can see here, ARR is a much more predictable and stable indicator of earnings potential and performance. Now let's take a look at the growth of the company. As you can see here, this is the ARR of the company and it has been growing very steadily over the last few uh, quarters. In fiscal year 2022, the company grew ARR to $925 million, which is a 59% year-over-year growth. So due to the law of large numbers, ARR growth has been declining, but it's still a very, very strong 50-60% growth year-over-year. As you can see here, net new ARR was $107 million in Q4, which is 72% increase year over year. It is an acceleration from the last few quarters, which shows that there's a lot of demand for UiPath's RPA solution. ARR growth was robust, primarily due to the fact that the company keeps adding more customers in its platform. By the end of Q4, the company collected 10,100 customers, which grew 27% year over year. But what's crazier is the fact that larger customers in the platform are increasing way faster than the total count of customers. Uh, customers more than with more than 100k ARR is grown is growing 49%, while customers with 1 million dollars of ARR is growing even faster. So that shows that there's a lot of potential for the company to convert low-paying customers into high-paying customers. And it also shows that customers are very happy with UiPath's product and value proposition. And that is why the dollar-based net retention rate is 145%. So it shows a lot about its technology as well as the company's land and expand strategy. Gross retention rate was 98% only, which means that there's only 2% of customers that uh, leave the platform. So while total customer number has been growing quite slowly, I think it is more important to look at these metrics because they show how much potential that the company have in terms of generating ARR. And also there's a lot of diversification in terms of the number of large customers in UiPath's platform and they're not concentrated into just a few customers. So while ARR and total customer count has been growing rapidly, uh, revenue is growing much slowly. In Q4, revenue was 290 million which is only a 39% year-over-year growth compared to ARR which grew by 59%. Now the reason behind the slowdown in revenue growth compared to ARR is because of the fact that the company is transitioning to a cloud-based model or subscription services dominant model, which I've explained earlier that revenue for subscription services will be recognized rateably over the contract period instead of upfront for the licenses revenue. So we're going to expect lower licenses revenue and subscription services will make up the majority of revenue in the future. So that is the reason why it's better to focus on ARR growth instead of revenue growth. Now let's take a look at the profitability of the company. One of the main reasons why I'm interested in UiPath is because of the fact that it has really really high gross margins. As you can see, 
gross margins has been above 80% each quarter with the exception of 2022 Q1 it's because of the fact that the company um, is paying high stock-based compensation as a result of going IPO. However, gross margins has been lower than prior quarters because the company is transitioning to a cloud-based model which they have to pay higher cloud hosting costs. While gross margins have been really high, operating margins have been really, really negative. The reason why is because of high stock-based compensation as well as the company reinvesting into um, raising awareness about RPA as well as for product innovation as well. Even during the Q3 earnings call, uh, CEO Daniel Dines said that our hiring into R&D was higher like there's no tomorrow. We're joking internally saying we don't have a budget for R&D. So that explains the reason why um, operating margin has been very, very negative. But if you look at the adjusted operating margin, the company has already been positive, so that's a good sign, and it's trending upwards. The same thing goes for net profit. The company is still unprofitable on a gap basis, but on an adjusted basis, it's already profitable, but still quite low. But overall, I think the fundamentals of the business is really strong, and the company is executing really well towards its long-term growth plans. Now looking at the financial health of the company, UiPath has cash and short-term investments of $1.9 billion. The company has virtually no debt, so its net cash position is $1.9 billion. Its current ratio is also pretty high at 4 times, which shows that its business model is relatively liquid. Now turning to free cash flow margin, of course it's still negative because the company is investing into uh, growth, particularly in customer acquisition, product innovation, and headcount growth. Overall though, I think UiPath has a very strong balance sheet. It is not burning so much cash, and I think that equity or debt raises is very highly unlikely here. Now let's take a look at management's guidance for Q1 and the full year. So Q1 ARR is expected to grow by 48%. Um, for the full year, it's expected to grow by 31%, which is a steep deceleration from the prior year growth of about 60% plus. We can see the same thing for revenue. Management expects revenue to grow by 21% for both uh, full year and Q1. So again, a very, very steep deceleration. Uh, full year, fiscal year 2022 revenue growth was 47% versus this year's expected growth, growth rate of only 21%. So the reasons for the weak guidance is because of the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine, as well as FX really the headwind that we're seeing here. During the Q4 earnings call, management mentioned that their roots are in Romania and the European market, which 30% of our business is in Europe. So management expects headwinds for its European operations. Here management also provided additional details. Um, first half 2023 net new ARR is to comprise approximately 35% of full year net new ARR. That means most of the growth is going to be in the second half of 2023, fiscal 2023. They are also expecting 4% headwind for revenue as the company transitions to a subscription model. So the next two quarters will look quite ugly because most of the net new ARR is going to be added in the second half of the year. And that could lead to short-term pain for the stock. But aside from that, the fundamentals of the business remain strong. Uh, management mentioned that there's a healthy pipeline and they're giving this weak guidance because of their guidance philosophy to be prudent during these uncertain times. Plus, UiPath has a history of bidding analyst expectations as well as its own guidance, so I think the fundamentals of the business will remain strong. Turning to the company's competitive advantages, I think UiPath has really strong technological moat because they're leveraging AI, machine learning, and API, which is a modern, scalable solution favored by many businesses today. 
They are also the market leader in the RPA industry as shown by some of the reports made by industry analysts. As you can see, IDC puts UiPath right at the top, Everest Group as well here, even Gartner puts UiPath at the top right hand corner. Uh, G2 Reviews is also has also placed UiPath as one of the leaders here next to Automation Anywhere. So the second competitive mode that UiPath has is Network Effects. The company has 10,000 plus customers including Chipotle, Chevron, Bank of America, GE, Adobe, CrowdStrike, and EY and more. So they have 80% of the Fortune 10 as well as 63% of the global Fortune 500. The company also have 5,000 plus business partners including Accenture, EY, Deloitte to help them distribute the software to end customers. They also have 400 plus technology partners and integrations including Microsoft, Salesforce, and AWS. And they have a thousand plus academic partners to teach automation skills to 250,000 plus students across 63 countries. So the ecosystem is really large and they also have a net promoter score of 71 which helps to promote this product everywhere. So last but not least, UiPath has high switching cost mode. It has an incredible value proposition and its land and expand strategy is already showing in the numbers with 145% net expansion rate as customers spend more on UiPath's platform and automate more processes and tasks, they're essentially creating an infrastructure, an automation infrastructure that is going to be really difficult for them to abandon or switch to another competitor. So turning to valuation, I think after the 75% sell-off, UiPath looks really attractive. They have an EV to gross profit multiple of 11 times from as high as 80 times and their forward sales multiple is at 7.3 times. Historically, it has been as high as more than 50 times so I think the 75% sell-off really gives a large margin of safety for interested investors. I've also included UiPath's valuation from its private funding rounds. As you can see here, you're basically getting a valuation below its July 2020 Series E funding round, which is 10.2 billion. Today it's $8 billion and trades at an ARR multiple of just nine times. So UiPath is basically trading at the cheapest valuation multiple ever compared to its previous funding rounds. So looking at some of the catalysts for the business, I think UiPath can establish more partnerships and integrations to solidify the ecosystem further. I think the great resignation, work from home policies, the growth of the gig economy and inflation makes it a very challenging environment for companies to operate in. And I think RPA providers like UiPath can help businesses minimize this exposure through software robots. The next catalyst is market share expansion. I think the RPA market is still in its early stages and there's a lot of room for growth for RPA providers like UiPath. The company is also stealing market share from competitors like Automation Anywhere and Blue Prism. And last but not least, new product launches and innovation will help accelerate the company's land and expand strategy. For risks, I think one of it will be geopolitical risks. The company's principal operations is in the US, Romania, and Japan. So Romania is located next to Ukraine, and if the Ukraine-Russia war escalates further, UiPath operations in Romania might be severely affected. And the next risk for UiPath is competition, primarily Microsoft Power Automate, which has been taking market share as it is very easy to bundle it with other Microsoft Office products. As you can see from Google Trend, Microsoft Power Automate has been trending upwards and is already surpassing um, UiPath. So investors should take note of that as one of the major risks for UiPath. However, management is seeing things differently. 
they're not seeing really any increase in competition there's less competitive pressures they're also replacing blue prism and automation and in terms of new entrants like microsoft and service now they're not really seeing any competition there despite these remarks from management we can't really dismiss the competitive pressures coming out from microsoft in conclusion UiPath has a strong business model, strong fundamentals, and a long growth runway ahead in the RPA industry. It has a strong network effect mode, technology, and switching cost modes. However, the ongoing war is going to substantially slow down growth in the short run, and I think there's going to be some short-term pain for the stock. But I think the 75% sell-off is overdone. And I think it is a good time to start accumulating shares on this high quality business. For me, I don't have a position just yet, but I'll be looking to start accumulating shares below $15. That's it for me today guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I post videos like this every single week. And if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys. Have a good one.